Welcome to Identified. After Katrina, we never had a Thanksgiving meal together again. We could never come back. We all lost and people died. And that was difficult for my mom and my father. The peak of my musical career, I lost my city. And I felt like I kind of lost my identity because New Orleans is so heavily a part of you. Yeah. I, it was just hard. I couldn't even grasp how awesome it was to be in this industry because all I kept thinking was, I have to feed my family. How everything my, my mom and dad built at the age of 50 was gone. Hello, I'm Nabil Ayers, author, music executive, and host of Identified, the podcast that delves deep into the complex world of family and identity. In this episode, my guest is Dawn Richard. Dawn comes from a family of survivors, and just like me, she has a musician father who was active in the funk and soul scene of the 70s. Growing up in New Orleans, Dawn was immersed in dance and music, but for her, music was only a hobby. It became her main focus when she left home for the first time to live in New York City as a contestant on the MTV reality show, Making the Band. Since 2005, Dawn has released several acclaimed solo albums. In our conversation, we discuss her family's displacement in Hurricane Katrina, one of the most informative points in her life. It impacted her sense of identity and the foundations from which her family was built. For Dawn, New Orleans has shaped who she is today. The soul of the city has had a huge impact on the ways in which she understands and ultimately defines community and family. Here's my conversation with Dawn. Born and raised Nightwood. Nightwood girl from New Orleans, Louisiana. My dad is a little Nightwood guy, and my mom is a Creole girl from New Iberia. They call it the Berry, which is like northern Louisiana. Okay, now, um, so not a neighborhood, but a different city. Like a little altogether. town. Yeah. yeah, like sugarcane farming and that kind of thing. And then my mom and her mother came down to New Orleans, and then my mom grew up in New Orleans in her high school life. Mm. And then met my dad when she was 15. My dad was 14, and they've been together ever since. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're the, each other's only one. That's amazing. Mm. You don't hear so a lot of definitely that Definitely rooted in New Orleans in yeah. a way. An older brother, four and a half years older than me, and mm -hmm. that's our crew. Well, I wonder, I mean, I don't have siblings, or well, it's more complicated than that. Yeah. I didn't grow up with any siblings. <laughs> right. So it sounds like you were close, and you're close oh, with your yeah, brother. We're, we're still close, yeah. So we're what, close, close as a four and a half year old right, older right. brother. Right, right. That's a big difference. Yeah, so. like obviously, I made him uncool by the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But closest, he. I always thought he was amazing. Yeah. I still think of him as this thing. Look up yeah, to him. of yeah. course, yeah. What was it like though when he? I mean, you know, when you're what fourteen ish and he's eighteen ish and he leaves the house and suddenly yeah. you're the only kid. It was fine because I was actually like happy he left because my brother is like the golden child, right? He right, was right, right. like valedictorian, went to Ivy League school, like super smart. Everybody loved him. He was just amazing. And I was like left, you know, I was like the girl that loved punk music and I had blue and pink hair <laughs> oh, or wow. anime outfits. I loved Hot Topic. My mom was so confused. <laughs> like, what is it? What is this? You know, she wanted me to wear pink and I was very much different. Yeah. So it was cool because I still thought my brother was amazing. But when he left, I felt like there was an opportunity for me to have like less pressure mm -hmm. when really that was not the case at all. Because <laughs> when he left, everyone was expecting me to have the same. Like follow in his yeah, footsteps. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to do me. You weren't valedictorian. No, but I was honors. Oh, yeah. Okay. I still was smart. My, my, my parents were very stern, very straight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so still, still straight A student. Wow. Yeah, both of us. Yeah, Amazing. that was... My parents were teachers. Oh, okay. So they were hard nose. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're not going to teach and you not be right, right. Yeah. When did you start playing music? Where does that come in? Okay. Oh, so my, a yeah, my father's a musician. Yeah. My father was signed to RCA, Alan Toussaint. The, the band was called Chocolate Milk. You should see the covers. I was like, Dad, a naked woman floating in space. It's what so were you good. on? It's so I, I was good. listening so and good. looking today. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that's that's they're a really, really magical time yeah. in music. They're really me, popular too. in New Orleans, yeah. and they still play Groove City to this day. They still play Jazz Ew. Fest. Yeah, they love them there. They toured with the Ohio Players, Lionel Richie. Like yeah. there was a moment in time for them that that they did really well. But also, like any band, when you have revolving members and splits and it fell where it fell. But my father had a master's in music. Mm -hmm. Went to Loyola, got his master's degree. Like a real musician. No, my dad can play. Yeah. yeah. And so he got, my mom encouraged him, you should maybe get a master's degree mm -hmm. um, and then teach. So he taught elementary music to students and my mom was reading comprehension. So my mom was a dancer, 
but they both knew the arts was never going to pay bills. So they both were teachers. Wow. So when my dad left the music industry, he had something to fall back on. Right. He had a master's degree in music theory. So wow. he was able to teach elementary school too. And he was a music teacher for different schools. Mm. And that worked out really well for him. And on the side, he would gig. Wow. So he'd still play at all the, like, every wedding, the mayor's wedding, wow. the, every funeral, every, anything, Gallia Feels like Hall. The guy. He's the guy. Yeah. Because they loved chocolate milk and he wrote all the stuff. Oh, okay. My dad was the writer of all the songs. Right, right. So, like, it never stopped for him. So I would leave school and when he would go have a gig, I would be his roadie. Oh, wow. I would roadie. And so I would, like, go to all his gigs. I wouldn't know he would see Tennessee Walls, all these, like, old school Frank Sinatra and Nat King Cole. He would know all these songs. And I would sit and just watch him. And then at the end of the gig, I would help him pack up. Were you playing music then? Would you sing? Would you ever sit in yeah, or anything I like mean, that? Yeah, I mean, my dad was the choir director. And so, like, I, we, we grew up Catholic. But our Catholic church had a gospel vibe. My dad made it cool. Right, Because right. that's, again. Right. He, <laughs> that, that's what he did. Catholic Church didn't look like we flipped it, and so we were a very popular twelve o'clock mass. Right, all the kids came to our <laughs> like mass. Concert, yeah, we yeah. were rocking. Yeah, uh, for a Catholic church, that's just like unheard of. Mm. But um, my dad put me in choir. My mom at two years old put me in dance, and though those things were there, I did never see career because mm. my my dad had told me the horror stories. My mom was not a fan of my dad during that music time because she had a son at the time yeah, yeah. and he was gone and she just wasn't feeling it. So her right. relationship to music wasn't necessarily that right. great either. Right. So music was never something that I thought could be a career. It was something that I looked at as a hobby, right. but in the meantime, academia. So it wasn't until I was 18 or, you know, between 16 and 18 where my dad was like on the side, let's, Let's do some stuff. Oh, so I right. started making an album with him, but it was never like, oh, this could go anywhere. It was mm-hmm. more like, I really loved doing this. Right. It's like a fun project. A fun with project yeah. with my father. And I, my dad knew I was good, but he didn't really know where to take me with it. He didn't mm. know what it, you know, like at that time I was in pop. I liked my first concert was Green Day. Wow. My second concert at the Orpheum Theater. Like I was wow. like, yeah. That, right. Right. You're talking um, about the hot topic yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so my second was Alanis Morissette. <sighs> no doubt. Those were my concerts. Yeah, and yeah. so my dad would come to the, I never forget when I brought him to Green Day. He didn't know what they were, and I brought him to the concert. It was weed everywhere. I was like, it was Dookie, like Dookie's album. Oh, so wow, Brain yeah, Stew was yeah. my favorite record. So I was like, my dad was just like, what? and then he heard the music. And he was like, I get it. Oh, he got it. And he became my 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 guy for concerts. But because of that, when I told him what I, music I wanted to do, he was so for it. Mm. But I don't think he couldn't find a place in New Orleans where that existed, right? It was jazz, it was right, R&B, right. it was soul. Mm-hmm. And here comes this black girl right. doing like pop. Right. And then my mom had a dance in school. So the, <laughs> I had dancers behind me. It was giving Britney Spears more than Whoa. it was giving what my right. dad, funk. Right, but it was all the elements, I guess, right? It, it was, was your amazing. mom, it was the stuff that you liked. It yeah. was everything. I was this right. hot spot. So my dad would work really hard to get me into the spaces that he knew. And mm-hmm. that was kind of where it was. And then I hit 18. Anthony Hamilton had a performance at the UNO Stadium, and it was all women. And my dad was like, we're going to just try and open up. And we got to stand an ovation. And I will never forget the feeling, what I felt. And that's when I was like, I think I might want to do this. Right. I'm a performer. Right. Which was the worst thing you could ever do because I was headed to college as a major in marine biology with a full scholarship in softball. The fork in the road. Yeah, yeah, so like yeah. My, I was going to Hawaii Pacific University. Whoa, Hawaii? Well, because yeah, softball. I really was really good in softball. Oh. I've been playing that as well since I was four, mm-hmm. and I was really good at it. Marine biology was the thing, and my mom was like, "Yeah, let's go." So we visited the school and everything. And my mm-hmm. dad looked me in my eye and said, "If you do this, music is not right. You can't do music here. <laughs> I can't help you." Right. And so I said no to all of that and stayed in New Orleans. Wow. And started music. Big decision. Yeah, Wait, I still man. went to school. Still went to school. Right, still right. graduated. Still got my degree. But on the side, I would dance in the NBA and sing. In the NBA? I tried out for the NBA team. Oh, wow. So that I could sing the national anthem. <laughs> did you get to sing the national I did. anthem? I hustled at an it. NBA game? Whoa. Well, yeah, because I couldn't get any other way. It's so political. And I, every time I would try out, nobody would pick me. Right. So then I said, well, I can dance. So right. I tried out for the NBA team. And then I got to sing the anthem anytime I wanted. I wanted to. Yeah, so dance became a really cool, it was the first thing I've ever done. It was very natural. And so it saved me a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And dance became something that kind of like, same thing when I got in the line to try out for making the band, which would be later in my life. 
Damn, it saved me. That's what got you. So I, I'm curious about that. I mean, yeah. I know about that a little bit, but mm-hmm. but what that was like, and, I, and I'm really curious too. From a like, was that your first time leaving home right. and being thrown in with Such a group a of question. people, and I guess sort of the the family dynamic of what that might have been like or might not. I'm not sure. So again, we were a tight pack. So yeah. actually, being in softball, I mm-hmm. was on park teams. I was like on the all star team. So I was always traveling, and it was always my family. Like yeah. it was dad, mom, and brother. I don't understand what superhero levels my parents were on, <laughs> right. but they were always there. Wow. Every sport, every game, but they had full jobs. My mom and dad both worked yeah. multiple jobs. My mom owned a business. Wow. I'm not really sure what that was about. And I still to this day don't know what magic and Im- illusionary they were doing, yeah. but they were there. And so like, even though making the band, when I tried out, I had left them for the truly for the first time mm-hmm. in that way. They weren't supportive. They did, okay. I, they weren't they were okay. time out. <laughs> yeah. When we did, I tried out for American Idol before making the band. Wow. That was the and my mom and dad came with me. Mm-hmm. We slept on the floor together, in the line, and I did not make it. And it was so devastating for my mom that she was like, "You will never do that again." Wow. She hated it already. Again, right. her relationship with music was right, and probably and a lot of personal to get rejected. Bits to, yeah, She yeah. was like, "No." So when making the band happen, my dancers, my dance team was like, there's a show you should try out. Right. And I was like, no one in New Orleans has ever been on television right. at and this, that time. And this is what, is it P. Diddy at the time? Is it Puff right. Daddy? It's Puff. It's, it's Puff. Puff. Okay. And this is what his, his yeah, show, he's going to make show, a band. Making the band. Yeah. He's making, and the girls were like, at this time, no, the only big star we had in pop was Britney Spears from Kentwood, Louisiana. There was oh, right. no right. girl, no black girl from New Orleans mm. in pop that would go on a a television show. It just wasn't. So I was like, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So I told my parents I was going to do it again. And my mom said, absolutely not. I took the $50. We made $50 per game. I took $200 of my little money, stayed at a Roach Motel, went to Orlando, left my parents and family for the first time, made the show. On the spot, like while you're there. Well, no, I had to try it a few times. I would try out the first audition and I'd make it because the first audition was dance. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Instead of singing. Right. So a lot of girls who could sing really well. Mm, couldn't get that far, yes. Yeah. Right. And so the NBA saved me. The dance, my mom wow. saved me. So I would call every time and my mom would be like, what? So I made the next round. I made the next round out of maybe, what, 10,000 girls. They picked three. I was one of the three in Orlando and then went to New York. So I went from being away from my parents then and then going to New York. That was mm-hmm. my first time out of the state like Whoa. that. And you're what, 18? I'm well, 18, yeah. 19 years yeah. old. I am super excited, but like this is beyond anything a girl from the Lord Knight Ward could have mm. ever. I mean, my parents, our vacations were Disney World. Right. You know what I mean? Like that was, we were like, yay, Florida. Right. And now here I am in New York. Yeah. And you've mm-hmm. never been to New York. I've never been in New York. And you get thrown into an apartment right. with I some been people like, you don't know. Exa- <laughs> 21 of them. Oh, they're 21. Well, right, because, <laughs> right. Oh, wow. Good old puff, right? Yeah. yeah, 21 girls, but I had been on a dance team with 21 girls mm. prior, so I... Same number. Wasn't that far. You knew how to far, maneuver it. Knew how to maneuver it. Knew the game. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know what it meant to stay in a space with a lot of girls and right. have to figure it out. I mean, I guess that was kind of like going to college and being in the dorms in a way. Like college, maybe, right? like my softball teams, right. like the basketball teams I was on, like mm-hmm. my mom's dancing school. My mom and dad prepared me yeah. in so many different angles and ways. Mm-hmm. If anything, it was like, okay, I was ready. I was prepared. I understood. And my parents had painted a picture about music in such a way that there were no fairy tale notions coming into this. Right, you knew the reality. Yeah, chances were it wasn't going to work. Chances were flames. Right. Yeah. Flames were flames. <laughs> right, Always right. flames. Yeah, and so right. I was, it was a job. I was ready and I knew that it, no one had had an opportunity like that. So I took it very seriously. Wow, yeah. Kind of like the household. Took it like my mom was running a tight ship. So right. I came in stern. Right, yeah. wow. And so once they accepted that, you, obviously, you're going, you're doing this, were they supportive at that point? No, my dad always was like music. So we Mm. always had that. But I still think my dad was fearful for me. He didn't have positive vibes from that, you know, like already. They had no idea what that would be for me. I think they believed in me, but I do think that they were still on the fence about the whole situation. And keep in mind, on the television show, they took away your phones. They took away everything. Oh, wow. So this is someone who has been very close to her family. Now, no contact with my family whatsoever. So I had to endure that on my own. So that was kind of like a thrust into real life, but not, you know yeah. what I mean? Like uh, reality television and 
in New York. It was just all of that at once. Yeah, and how, mm-hmm. how often did you get, did you get like a phone call a week? Yeah, it was like something? prison, right? Yeah, you exactly. Go. <laughs> I was going to say that, but you Sidebar, too, we yeah. would sneak to the Apple store in Soho and like we would like almost on some like <laughs> kidnap shit where we were like typing our parents <laughs> through email. Like, <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> because the phone, they only had one in the house, had a camera. Like how this is. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Eyeballs. <laughs> yes. So like they watched and listened to all your shit. Well, I mean, true reality show. Like at, at the peak, peak right, reality it was, show. It was time. no scripts, babe. It was right. like this is all. Were you one yeah. of the people who walked to, walked to the cheese to Junior's cheesecake? That cheese was a boy. <laughs> he made us run nine miles with a chariot behind us and a blowhorn. Like, it, <laughs> don't laugh. It's our life. <laughs> Not that. It's very serious. Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. Wow. And then get cuts and then learn to dance after you've run for eight miles and then say, okay, you're on camera now, you look a hot mess. And then it's like, okay, now cuts. After you've run seven miles, now dance. And I want you to dance amazing. Execute. And then, yeah, we'll cut whoever's not on it. But you, you That was served, one day. Wow. And you made it. I made it. Because you were prepared. Again, the tight ship that the parents. Yeah. My mom and dad ran a tight ship. But you're in a good place, at least a place to be able to take I'm care grateful. of yourself. And I yeah. hated it then. Right. Grateful for it now. Right. Yeah, I know. He's like, what is going on? Was that your life? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and we shot like six to eight seasons of that. <laughs> Just Twilight. That's so, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so I'm curious, it's backtracking a bit, but your family, yeah. what's interesting is like, this is all really interesting stuff, but your yeah. family, tech, like on paper, is sort of a very traditional normal family, right? Mother and father, yeah. high school sweethearts, still together, yeah. older brother, everyone did well in school, like yeah. very like sort of like traditional family. Yeah. What, were there other kids you were friends with or other families growing up that sort of framed the way you felt about yours? Meaning, did you know we have a really good family, other people are having a harder time or there's people whose fathers left or there are yeah. divorces? Like, did you notice Ironically, things like that as a kid? my friends all had the same model. Mm. I don't know if that was purposeful whether my parents did that. I don't right. know. But my best friends at the time growing up when I were kids, their parents were together um, and they had kind of a tight ship like that. It wasn't until high school that I was like, wait, not everything is like my parents. New Orleans is an interesting thing. My mom and dad went to, again, Catholic private schools. My parents taught at public schools and they were, New Orleans doesn't have, at the time, Public education was not well in New Orleans. We were not given the funding. There is a big disparity the way they treat people of color in education in New Orleans. And my parents knew it. So they worked their asses off for my brother and I to go to private school. Mm -hmm. In New Orleans, we have such a rare thing where there are predominantly black Catholic schools. My brother went to the brother school, St. Aug, St. Augustine, which is where your John Baptiste, a lot of P.J. Morton. St. Augustine is a prestigious black high school. Mm. They almost feel like a college. Right. March and fi- uh, 100 band. The sister school is St. Mary's. My mom went to St. Mary's. Wow. My dad went to St. Aug. Wow. My mom's brother went to St. Aug, right? My dad's sister went to St. Mary's. Wow. Kind of crazy, yeah. right? Tradition. Tradition. And so I was expected to go there. My brother thrived at St. Aug. He loved it. I did not love St. Mary's. And so I chose to go to a predominantly white school. I left because my make was different. My softball and that journey chose me to be in round diversity that my brother didn't necessarily mm. have. St. Aug was all black, mm. all black men. So he loved it. I didn't want that. Yeah. So I went to this, this school called De La Salle. And that is when I started seeing all kinds of different types of families. Right. Single parent homes, adoption, some kids who severely like lacked fathers, mm. father figures, and it was cool. It was cool to experience that kind of make because uh, till that point, there was a silo that was built for us. Right. You know, we went to a predominantly black elementary school, yeah. Catholic. So we grew up in this like very wholesome where our schools were. I think my principal was Irish nuns. Oh wow! My elementary school pro, really? yeah, like Sister Maeve, they were Irish nuns and I loved them. Wow. But we were sheltered. I think I started to see something different later in my life that I was right. like, okay, there's different makes. But from what I knew, our thing was normal. Right, like right. It was a regular thing. And was it there? Is that where you got into Green Day and Alanis and, and that stuff? I, the, I, I was just that kid. That? Yeah. I don't know what I was. Yeah, like yeah. I came out automatically knowing I wanted something different. Right, right, right. 
I, I don't know what that was about. No one in my family was that. I just found it right. and attached to it and loved it. Unfortunately, that was very confusing for my mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was devastated. Like she was just like, "What is this?" Um, I think my dad just kind of followed wherever I went with it, but right. I think he also did not understand that. But as a musician, could respect it. Right. Sure. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But different. I was a, just this odd thing over here. That yeah. yeah. And both you said your parents are both still alive. Still alive, still together. together. Amazing. Different time. Wild. <laughs> I know, yeah. Right? They went just, just together all the way through. Yeah. But have you experienced much grief in your family or any, oh, any loss? Yeah, man. We went through Katrina. Oh, We wow. lost everything. So I lost a grandfather through that. And for a family that was this, Katrina made us this. Mm. We were very small. My mom's mom was very tight. I was very close to her. She was a PhD in library science. So again, education yep. all the way through. After Katrina, we never had a Thanksgiving meal together again. We could never come back. We all lost and people died. And that was difficult for my mom and my father. The peak of my musical career, I lost my city. And I felt like I kind of lost my identity because New Orleans is so heavily a part of you. Yeah. I, it was just hard. I couldn't even grasp how awesome it was to be in this industry because all I kept thinking was, I have to feed my family. How everything my, my mom and dad built at the age of 50 was gone. Birth certificates, pictures, my mom's connection to her mother, my dad's connection to his, everything gone. His music, everything, like gone. The baby grand piano that was his whole life, gone. Oh, wow. That loss was very triggering and very hard because that was the first time I saw my parents not have it together. Right. That stern, strong, I'm always present yeah. was not there anymore. They weren't in control. Well, you know, we were sleeping on the floor. We were sleeping in a car. We were homeless. This middle class family, private school, and then nothing. We have nothing. And so how did you come back from that? How did they come back from that? They built a foundation so strong that the first thing I said was that whatever I needed to do to get it back. My brother at that time was going to Johns Hopkins. Mm. We had no other family. My entire, when I say my family's from New Orleans, when Katrina happened, there was nowhere to go because everyone is from New Orleans. Right, and so I'm my, still I there. had no yeah. house. <laughs> My father had, we all lived in yeah. a mile radius, right? And so everything like, was just destroyed in so that there mile. Was, we were all just like homeless. Yeah. My brother didn't even get in touch with us till weeks later. And then when he did, he was like, come to Baltimore, please. Like, yeah. so after living in the car for however long we were, we just, we had nothing. We packed for three days and never saw our homes again. We drove to Baltimore. Now, mind you, we don't know what the hell Baltimore is. We right. go to his one bedroom with his one girlfriend that he's living with because he's still in school. And we sleep on a brown carpeted floor. And in the meantime, Puff brings us back to the show. I hadn't made the band yet. Oh, this so is I all go the same back, time? Oh I go back God. on the show with no clothes. <laughs> he picks me. I make the band. But now it's not yay. It's we need jobs immediately. Can we start now? So the stress of like, what do they do? So my parents, being who they are, resilient, found jobs, teaching jobs, got into an apartment. This is in Baltimore still. In Baltimore. Yeah. First winter we're there because Katrina happened in August, mm. a blizzard. We didn't even know what, like, what, right. what is this? What is this? <laughs> what is this? So it was a thing. And that disconnect, my parents, being who they are, started, they were supposed to retire. They didn't. Started teaching. One year turned into 10. 10 years away from her mother, mm -hmm. my dad, from his music, from his family of awesome that he built. So yeah, that was loss yeah. and it was trauma. And I had to watch depression in my family. I had to watch my mom and dad navigate something that they never had to navigate before, away from the foundation that built them. That was rough. Also losing my grandfather in the middle of in it too. So that was hard. And I think that my parents would never be the same because of it. But for whatever reason, they stayed together. They were fought through it. And did they go back? On the 10-year anniversary, my brother, my brother and I begged them. Uh -huh. And they finally said, okay, and they went back home. Wow. And that was wild to watch. And I think that was the best thing they could have ever done for mm -hmm. them, for their mental health. Yeah, to be back in um, I, I don't think my home. parents, yeah, yeah would have done well in Baltimore like that. They had no friends, they had no one. They were just working. Mm -hmm. They were working to build money. Just surviving, yeah. But we hadn't had a Thanksgiving. I mean, the Thanksgiving was 
the four of us instead of this right. beautiful thing we used to have. And that was a tradition every year. Yeah, that everyone. never happened again because my grandmother died. And she died before my mom and dad could move back. What is family to you? So in the midst of this, my father got diagnosed with cancer. Healthiest man I know. He has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it is something that doesn't disappear. Loss is real for my family, but there is this level of New Orleans people. There is this survival, this resilience that you feel when you go. This pride of never losing what matters, even if it's nothing, even if it's this much. Mm -hmm. We'll dance like it's the sun. I don't know what that is. We are born with it. And you can feel it in the city. There, with nothing, we make this small city with one highway. Feels like New York. Feels big. Feels like LA. People come visit a place that has one highway in and out. <laughs> right? That is what my family, to me, is. We are this living, breathing power source. Um, and though we are small, four of us, we fight. My father then had a mini stroke just recently. When I say I dropped everything and we made it work as we are a system. We just had a call today and he is in remission. He had a PET scan. He's doing good. And so I didn't sleep for five days. When, after Christmas, we found out I stayed and, and that, my brother went, flew in. That four, that unit, Whatever my mom and dad did at the age of 14 and 15 has stayed true till 70 and 71, 72 years old. They have built something so strong that my brother and I can, you fly in there, I'm flying. System, here's a schedule, We a unit, because we know what it was like to lose everything and have nothing. And in that loss, that four, we figured it out. So in the midst of it all, if the world is crumbling, that four will never, that unit will never leave. To give you backstory, my mom grew up in an alcoholic home where her mother was beat for 25 years. Oh, God. Right? That father didn't leave until my mom had to raise a knife on her own father. All right? The tenacity, and then that same woman got her PhD at the age of 60. Right? That single woman yeah. raised a brother and a sister, my mom and her brother. And then that person made my mom stern home. Yeah. Right. My dad grew up in a home where his father was a cheater, had a beautiful wife and then cheated and had a whole second family. And my father could never, ever look at his dad the same. So therefore, my dad met a woman at 15 and said, never. From those systems, they built this cube and that cube is solid. Two broken homes built this incredible kind of temple and we st still rocking. Thanks for tuning in. Please consider subscribing to Identified wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss an episode. And be sure to check out Identified on YouTube and identifiedpod.com where you can watch videos from our interviews. Our executive producer is Kieran Banerjee, and the show is produced by Palm Tree Island. The music for Identified is by Noella and Patricia Brennan. I'm Nabil Ayers. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>